Imagine, if you will, you spent the last month getting this property ready for the new tenants. The last tenants, they thrashed the place. So property's ready and you get served to go to small claims court. The last tenants want to take you in front of the judge to try to get their security deposit back. Well, you know how they left the place. So you're happy to go talk to the judge. To your surprise, you lose. Often, the most contentious part of the landlord-tenant relationship is the return of the security deposit. Security deposit is money that the tenant gives the landlord to hold in case there's damage done to the property or if the tenant does not live up to the terms of the lease. In this case, the tenants clearly did more damage to the property than the security deposit covered. Unfortunately, the landlord didn't follow the rules. Now, here are some of the rules you need to know as a landlord. One of the most important rules is the landlord has 21 days to settle up. When a tenant moves out, if you don't pay them in full, you must give a letter of explanation of why you didn't, along with a detailed accounting, including receipts for any item over $125. Of course, all this must be done, uh, we have receipts for everything, and all this must be done within 21 days. And believe me, 21 days goes fast. In California, the landlord can deduct from the tenant security deposit for the following reason. One, the cost of fixing any damage to the property that the tenant may have done, provided it's not ordinary wear and tear. Two, the cost of cleaning the unit provided that it's putting the unit back in the same condition that it was when the tenant originally rented it. Three, any unpaid rent the tenant may owe, including rent owed because the tenant did not give proper notice. The landlord can withhold from the security deposit for repairs that are only necessary and reasonable. And this does not include ordinary wear and tear. To be fair, ordinary wear and tear may seem kind of arbitrary. The use of reasonable judgment and experience, I mean, that's what you have to use in this case. So like, for example, they've hung up a bunch of pictures in the house and they're gone three months later and you have to repair all the holes for the pictures being up there. That's not, that's reasonable to charge for that. Um, if they've been there over a year and fulfilled their lease and they just hold down a normal amount of pictures, that's ordinary wear and tear. That's fair. These items can often be argued. And for many things, there's, there's like for paint, I, most places will consider three years the normal lifespan. So if you're a landlord and you're going to go for something that's not ordinary wear and tear or you want to prorate that, you need to have an argument for it a good, common sense, reasonable argument. And if you can't provide that, it's probably ordinary wear and tear. Also, if you're a tenant, when you move in, you most likely got a form that had to be in, I believe within three or five days, um, that's filling out uh, the inspection, the condition notice on your property. So often, tenants just fight filling that out. They're so happy to move in and so busy, they don't want to deal with that silly piece of paper. That paper's for the tenant's protection. Tenants, that's for your own good. Fill out that paper, it's to protect you. Also, doesn't hurt to take pictures, digital pictures, take them on your phone, save them somewhere. Um, all that is gonna matter. For landlords, the advice I'd give you is, first of all, keep good records. Get that statement out within 21 days. Provide receipts. By all means, don't be greedy. And don't be afraid to enlist the help of a property manager. Them serving as a referee uh, 
um, arbitrator in these times uh, is, is, uh, is money well spent. If you want to find out more about security deposits, property management, or anything real estate, we'd be more than happy to talk with you at the Mike Dunn.